he had a very narrow maxilla. So these are records of January 2020. Narrow maxilla, posterior, left, sorry, right, cross bite, and midline deviation. You see how he's shifting his lower jaw to the right. So the lower midline is two millimeters to the right of the left of the upper. We fit the expander. This is how it looks on the sides. This is how it looks on the occlusal. I usually, for an older kid, I start aggressively. The older they are, the more aggressive I am to start. I can go as much as one turn a day. The younger they are, the more passive we are. We can go as little as twice a week to start. At some point, you can do once a week for maintenance. In this case, I think we went once daily until we expanded enough. And I believe those of you that have been um, asking me about expansion, I've taught you to look at the screw in the center and see how much excess of the screw you have on the sides and look as that continues to expand, see how little and then nothing. Because your, screw, your, your apparatus is traveling across the screw and then you end up with space in the middle. And that's how you know they've been turning it. It's not only that I give them specific instructions and number of total turns, because now I can measure, okay, we've got about eight millimeters of expansion here. So that should translate automatically on the bite. This is when we remove this. You can see the mark. And this is literally September 19th, September 24th, a week later. So sometimes I don't get the impression right away if the gum tissue is inflamed. I bring them back in two to five days. So within that first week, and I get a better impression if I want to give them an Essex as we wait for braces. But the beautiful thing is now there's no cross -line. So we haven't even started braces yet, and we've gotten a significant improvement.